Amy Gowan, uh, Director of Planning and Zoning. Josh Lannis, uh, Unicef Director with the Howard County Education Association. Chris Wells, a uh, resident. Uh, Jessica Bella, I work for Columbia Association. Joe Lankos, resident. Steve Green, Security Development. Tim Feige, Heritage Land Development, resident. Mavis Ellis, Pasture Board of Education. Sherry Zara, representative from King's Contrivance in Columbia. Kathy Hudson, citizen. Jeff Delmonico, community planner. Uh, Victoria Olivier, also a community planner. Sarah Latimer, also a community planner. And Kate Bollinger, community planner. I got a dark back there. <laughs> 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 uh, Brian Shepard, deputy director of the department. Mary Kendall, also another deputy director. And we got Leslie Bauer, Leslie. president of Howard County Farm Bureau. You want to go to the virtual room? Yes. Yes, let me call one. Call one. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. All right. Uh, Barbara? Uh, I'm Barb Seeley. I'm the chair of King's Contriving Stones Association. I did not hear that. King's Contriving Okay. Uh, Cole? Hey, Cole Schnorf, a commercial developer with Mannequin. Dan Lulu? Dan Lubley, Director of Capital Planning and Construction for our County Public School System. Jason Van Kirk. Jason Van Kirk, Elm Street Development. <clears throat> Matt? Um, Shani Meg Boyd, Howard County Conservancy. Olivia? Hi, Olivia Farrow, um, a citizen, but also a member of the Howard County Environmental Sustainability Board. Patricia? Um, good morning, uh, good afternoon. I'm with the uh, commissioner with the Howard County Housing Commissioner Commission and also um, business advisor with Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses. Sue? Sue Song, Korean American Society. Vicki Catronio. Vicki Catronio, Chair of the Board of Education. Great. And last but not least, Matt. Uh, Matt Newcaster, City Explained, uh, Consultant Team, Extension of Staff. I believe that's everyone. Thank you. Oh, and we were joined oh. by uh, Kevin McLilly, Co Chair of Howard Equal Works. Thank you. And many other hats. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, our agenda today, I'm going to start off very briefly, talk about the current general plan, recent trends. Matt's going to talk about the planning approach, future land use map, character areas. Um, we'll have a, a discussion um, on that. And then Mary will um, talk about dynamic neighborhoods draft chapter and we'll have a discussion. Um, so we've tried to time it so that we're doing just as much talking as everyone else. You know, it's a long meeting, um, so feel free to, I don't think we have a break program then, so feel free to use the facilities um, if you need to. Um, so with that, uh, if you want to put the next slide. Um, so just, a, just as a little refresher, this is our um, Plan Howard 2030 land use map. Um, and as you'll see, the areas in orange are those areas that were envisioned for growth and revitalization in our current general plan. Um, it, this map shows um, areas along corridors, village centers, and other centers. Um, and it's really large swaths of area that was programmed, <clears throat> excuse me, for um, growth and revitalization. Our land use map in HOCO by Design, while it is more colorful, colorful, when you look at the areas to transform, it's not very different than this map. Um, the HOCO by Design map is uh, more targeted. And so it's kind of reducing that orange into more specific areas to add for more pr predictability and the ability to plan for infrastructure. Um, plan Howard 2030, this map was really used to guide the county during a rapid growth cycle, but we have since transitioned to a more modest growth environment. And the next few sh slides show some of the development trends which are indicative of that transition. So if you go to the next slide, this is the um, pre-submission. I'm sorry for anyone who's having to sit through this again, because I did uh, present some of these at the community meetings. But I thought it was worth um, just talking a little bit about what we're seeing in terms of pre-submission community meetings. 
So these are a leading indicator of future development activity in the county. They occur at the very beginning of the process. They can, um, they're required to be done a year before a plan is even submitted. So this really allows us to look out and get a good sense of the projects that we anticipate and the units we anticipate that may come online um, over the next three years or so. And so the red line is the number of projects and then the blue, uh, sorry, red line is the number of units and the blue bar is the number of projects. So you can see just over the last few years, there's been uh, a 73% decline in the total number of proposed units and 50% in the total number of projects by comparison to the preceding period of time, planning period. So these are um, definitely indicate a marked slowdown in development activity ahead. Another indicator of uh, future growth is the housing allocations that are required according to the adequate public facilities ordinance. So these are based on plans as they, usually as they enter the pipeline and, the, and the, they are issued three years out. So the thinking is that it could, it's going to take on average, it could take less, it could take more, but on average about three years to get through the entire process and to get to a, you know, a use and occupancy permit. So that three year period is you know, coming in the door and then actual units 